Honestly, I have no interest in ever owning a smart speaker, let alone a security system which stores video outside of my control. They are inherently dangerous. I do not care how secure you say your service actually is. Every service has a possibility to have a data leak. And sure, there is some convenience that you get from having a speaker listening to everything you do, listening to voice commands, that's fine and all. But you have to trust the company that is collecting that data. And Amazon is not a company that I trust, and they've recently given me another reason to never buy one of these devices. Amazon's been talking publicly about this as a concept for about two or so years, but it only recently became an actual thing that you can use. So Amazon describes this as a way to create smart neighborhoods. Now, you put smart in front of anything and it will sell. What it actually is though, is a way for your Amazon Echo and your Ring camera to share your home Wi-Fi out with the world. This is going to be done by sending out a Bluetooth LE signal from the sidewalk bridge device, and then sidewalk enabled devices can listen to that signal and then send data back over the signal, and then from the bridge, it can send it over the Wi-Fi. I initially thought this was going to allow you to connect just any random devices like your phone, your laptop, things like that. But at least for now, Amazon says it's just going to be for these low power sidewalk enabled devices. So things like say, your smart lights or maybe your smart speaker you have in your shed that can't actually reach your Wi-Fi or maybe you have a camera that's at the edge of your yard and your yard's too big to connect with your Wi-Fi, things like that. I 100% predict that Amazon is going to make a future sidewalk where it is going to be sharing a full version of your Wi-Fi though. Now for the data cap concerned, I know that in the US data caps are still just a fairly normal thing. Transmissions are going to be capped at 80 kilobit, and then for devices connecting to your bridge devices, there'll be a data cap of 500 megabytes. I don't know if this number is just hard coded or if you can actually go and modify it, but regardless, 500 is the default. For a trillion dollar company trying to get a free ride off its users, it could certainly be worse. Now, I am kind of interested to see if at some point this ends up being like a TOS violation with some random ISP and they try to sue Amazon. I think that would be kind of funny. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it would be funny. Now, if you do have an extreme data cap, Amazon won't be giving you any compensation, so make sure you do actually go and disable this. I absolutely agree with Amazon that this is really cool tech. So if you have, say, like a tile tag and you put it on your dog's collar and that dog runs away and then around your city, there are a bunch of sidewalk bridges that keep that tile tag always connected to Wi-Fi. You could then very easily track that dog down and you're good to go. But sharing your home Wi-Fi is incredibly terrifying. If you're in a region that has sidewalk enabled, which right now is just the United States, if you buy a new Echo or a new Ring device, you'll basically be automatically opted in with the option to opt out shown to you, basically telling you all the merits of Sidewalk with a little option there, do you want to opt out? Now, I imagine that over time, they're going to make that option to opt out harder and harder to actually find. But being shown the option is much better than what you get for existing devices. When Amazon Sidewalk rolled out, all of those devices were automatically enabled. You can still go and disable the option inside of your Amazon account, but unsurprisingly, it's not easy to find. And you also can't go and preemptively disable the option before actually owning a device because you can't see the option inside of your Amazon account until you have a connected bridge device. Because of this Bluetooth connection, Amazon says these devices are not connecting directly to your Wi-Fi network. Instead, they're just connecting to the sidewalk bridge. Now, if you know anything about networks, you would know that difference doesn't actually matter. At the end of the day, they're still connecting to the network. But Amazon says this is all safe because packets traversing the sidewalk network have three layers of encryption to ensure data is visible only to the intended party. This approach to encryption means that Amazon will not be able to interpret the contents of commands or messages sent through sidewalk by third party services or endpoints. Now that specifically might be true. Amazon might have absolutely no way to understand what's happening on the sidewalk network. But that doesn't mean they're not collecting information about devices on the network, which they already openly do. It's 
a well-established fact that everything that you do with your Amazon Echo is being collected. And I imagine the same thing is happening with everything running over the Amazon APIs. But here's the thing about encryption. Encryption is only secure until it's no longer secure. And at the end of the day, once that encryption is no longer there, you're still just sending network traffic over a Wi-Fi connection and it can be sniffed like any other sort of traffic, allowing you to basically just do a man in the middle attack with your home Wi-Fi network. Now, Amazon does say they received some routing information about network components on the sidewalk network, but this is going to be deleted every 24 hours. Let's just believe that the routing information is being deleted. They don't say anything about the contents of the packages though. So, are you collecting that? Yes, yes you are. You're already doing that. Now this just allows you to collect it in a different way as well. And the cherry on top is we use one-way hashing keys, cryptographic algorithms, and rotating device IDs to disassociate data tied to customers. Now, who knows the one-way hashing keys? Who has the cryptographic algorithm knowledge? Who knows how the device IDs are actually rotating? Well, that would be Amazon, wouldn't it? Well, uh, if you know all three of these things, you can just recreate the data. If Amazon didn't have a track record of violating people's privacy, maybe I would believe them. Maybe if they were lucky. But this is Amazon that we're talking about, so, um... Yeah, uh, I, I could keep doing this all day. Amazon isn't exactly to be trusted. Honestly, I'll not be surprised if within a year or two, a story comes out saying that there was a massive data leak on the sidewalk network and people were actually getting access to users' home Wi-Fi, or if maybe, I don't know, turns out that Amazon actually is storing all this information, not just the information they already store, but also the routing information, and then they get in trouble for that and just keep doing it, it wouldn't surprise me. It just, it just fits with what Amazon's already been doing. On the bright side, if you go to Google and you look up Amazon Sidewalk, basically your news section is going to be full of people basically saying, hey, uh, you should probably opt out. Here's how to opt out. Here are the devices supported. Okay, that's fine. How to turn it off. Should you be worried? And this is like a lot of mainstream outlets. This is honestly a good thing. I was honestly surprised that they weren't just like all on board with Amazon and actually are getting in security experts that realize how big of a problem this is. This is not something you should be letting Amazon do. They are a trillion dollar company. If they wanted to do this properly, they could very easily do so. What they could do is with the next generation of Echoes, they could have them all embedded with a SIM device and then that SIM device is what's being used to actually connect everything together. That would still be pretty terrifying, but at least it's not sapping off of your connection and creating a massive security hole that anybody can abuse. They would never do that though because they're a publicly traded company and doing so would cost a lot of money and that's not something your stockholders typically are a big fan of when there's not a massive payout for it. As the years go on and on, it becomes harder and harder to actually get yourself disconnected from the internet. While you can fairly easily do it if you're in a room by yourself, if you go outside, everyone just has a microphone on them and that microphone is probably going to be connected to the internet. So as surveillance becomes more and more normalized and becomes basically the default, being actually private is really out of the ordinary and that's completely backwards. One thing to note is not every single Echo and every single Ring device actually will be supported. So basically only these devices here are currently supported and Amazon hasn't decided to comment on whether older devices will be supported. Now, Amazon is very different to a company like Apple. Apple wants you to be on the newest and greatest hardware. Amazon, on the other hand, they want you to be using something. If you are using something in the Amazon network, they can collect your data. So if the list doesn't get expanded, basically it'll be because Amazon just couldn't get it actually working on those devices. As time goes on, I really feel like I should just go and live down by the river with the boomers and just enjoy life, not being connected to the internet, 
every second of every day, but we'll see what happens in the future. So that's going to be basically everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andre Nathan, David Carl, Mitchell Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Peter D, Stephen T, through Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. This channel is available over on Odyssey, and I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I stream games twice a week, and I also upload YouTube shorts, which is clips from the actual streams. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.